Now, once you understand how you can use SWR in the Next.js application, let me show you how you can store the data in the MongoDB database. If you open the API users.js, we just store this data inside this user API endpoint. Or you can store this data in the JSON file or in the JavaScript file. But usually, we're not going to store this data in the JSON or JavaScript file. Instead, we store this data in the database. So we can access this data and create an API endpoint to fetch this data from the database and display on the front end. Let me show you how you can connect MongoDB database and insert both these users inside the MongoDB database. So you have to first type MongoDB and enter. Then just go ahead and click on this mongodb.com. Right from here, you have to first sign in. I'm going to click on the sign in button and I'm going to sign in with my Google account. So I'm going to click on this login with Google. Once I've done that, it's going to open the database. So we need to first create a new project. I already done that. You have to just click on this new project and create a new project. Once you create that, you have to create a cluster. Or you can say you have to create your database. To create a database, just click on this build a database. Here you have three options, the server layers, dedicated and the share server. Let's choose the free one, which is share server. I'm going to click on this create button. Once I click on it, just scroll down. I'm going to leave everything as it is. And then I'm going to change this cluster name. And I'm going to name this testing. You can choose any name to this cluster. That's upon you. And then click on this create cluster. Once I've done that, I'm going to create a new user. So I'm going to pass here username, admin. And password is going to be admin123. Now because I already have user inside this database access, I'm not going to create this user. Now if you don't want to create this user early, you can just leave this statement as it is. Scroll down and click on the finish and close. Just after that, just click on this go to database. And now it will take a few minutes to create this cluster. We're going to click on this database access. Then you can see here, I have here a new user. To create a new user, just click on this add new database user and create a new user. When you click on it, you will get your username and password. So I'm going to create my new user using username and password. And then I'm going to click on this network access. And I'm going to create add IP address. So I'm going to click on this add IP address. And then I'm going to choose add current IP address here and click on confirm. I already done that. If you want to know more about MongoDB, I have a dedicated video on it. You can check out that video from the link provided in the description. You can see the database is now successfully created. Let me just click on this connect. And here we get the application connection. So I'm going to click on this connect your application. And here is the URL. You have to copy this URL and paste that in your Next.js application. So just back to your Next.js application, right inside your Next.js app database. And inside this, let me create a new file called connection.js. Here, what we have to do is we have to create the MongoDB connection. Now to create this connection, we need to install a library called Mongos. So I'm going to open my terminal and now I'm going to enter into my application. Let me zoom this a little bit. And here I'm going to execute a command called npm i4 install and then I'm going to install mongos. Mongos is a library used to connect MongoDB with your Next.js application. Now, once you have this here, you're going to create a constant main function, something like this. I'm going to just specify that async function. I'm going to initialize this function as async function. And inside this, I'm going to connect my MongoDB with Next.js. So at the top here, I'm going to first say, import mongoose from mongoose library so i'm going to say here mongoose dot connect using this connect function you're going to connect your mongodb with nextjs so here we pass single quote i'm going to paste my link here now you're not limited to specify this link just inside this connect function if you want you can create the dot env file inside the nextjs and specify this link inside that file we look at that how we can work with .env files in the Next.js letter. Just for now, just specify this link and right here, I'm going to get rid of this password. And my password of this user is admin123. So I'm going to pass my password here like this. This is my user. This is my password. And I'm going to leave everything as it is. Just pass here of it to make this asynchronous. And after that, just out of this statement here, I'm going to say console.log and I'm going to print database connected something like this 
just sort that you have to just export this main so we can use that in the other files so i'm going to say here export default main that's it your connection is now successfully ready now just sort that we need to tell this mongodb database that what kind of data i want to store in the database for that we are using schema so inside this database let's create a new file and i'm going to name this file schema.js that's upon you you can specify any name to this file inside this file we need to first import mongoose from the mongoose module and then here i'm going to say constant kitty schema is equal to this is the variable name and then i'm going to create a new instance of mongodb schema so i'm going to pass here new mongoose dot schema something like this you pass here parenthesis and an object using this object you specify the structure for your document so here inside this document i just have here a name with type of string that's it this is a simple schema just out of that i'm going to say constant kitten is equal to mongoose dot model now we have to create a model and specify name to it i'm going to specify name to it kitten and specify the schema here this schema is going to specify structure to this model so we pass this variable as a second argument to this model just out of that i'm going to just export this so i'm going to say here export default kitten let me save this that's it just out of that you have to back to your api endpoints so i'm using here user endpoint i'm going to open that just after that inside this user endpoint at the top i'm going to first import my database connection function so i'm going to say here import main from the database connection and then i'm going to say import kitten from the database schema we also need schema to specify structure to the document so we import both these files and inside this function here we first going to check so i'm going to call here mem if the connection is successful then we're going to execute this function or we're going to catch an error inside this catch function so i'm going to say here error console dot error and then i'm going to print this error here something like this so now this function is going to return a promise we are going to catch that promise error inside this catch function and if you want to print a successful message you can use then function right down here i'm going to say constant create is equal to new and then you pass this schema let me just specify here capital k like this so we pass here key 10 something like this so we create a new instance of this schema and then pass here data so as you know inside the schema we have the name with a type of string so we pass that here so i'm going to just copy this name and then specify that right here something like this just out of that right down here we need to save this data so i'm going to say here create dot save this function is going to save this data in the mongodb database and then i'm going to say here dot then then i'm going to get the response and i'm going to print here response dot status 200 the successful status and return the json data create this one i'm going to return this data when we successfully save this data in the mongodb database now let me just comment this because we are not using this now let me save these changes back to the project and let me open here api endpoint and we have user here users you can see the name of the endpoint is users so we pass here users and press enter when i open the api users i'm going to get an error message cannot override keaton model once compiled you're going to get this error because we have here this statement nextjs is going to recompile this statement every time when the page is loaded so to solve this problem if we already have this model then we don't need to create this model again we need to tell nextjs that we don't need to create this model if the model is already available to do that here you have to specify mongoose dot model and here inside this you're just going to specify kitten something like this and if we don't have this model we execute the second statement so we pass here or so if we don't have this model just execute this second statement or otherwise execute this first statement you can also simplify this statement with mongoose 
dot model is equal to and then you pass here an object you can use this technique as well but i will suggest to use this technique for the reference i'm going to comment this back to the project and reload it oops i think something went wrong in the terminal yeah i get the error message let me just check the connection string again yeah i just misspelled this admin it's admin 123 let me save this restart my server you can see i'm gonna get the result something like this you might get error here if you get an error message just move this database folder inside these pages something like this and that will solve all the problems so once you have your database inside these pages now let me just insert my second value in the users you can see right down here we have the second value let me copy this and paste that here I don't have ID in my schema. Let me save these changes back to my project and reload it. You can see now I'm going to have my second name. And if I back to my database, click on browse collection, then you can notice here we have test database. And inside that we have a document called kitten. And then we have few documents here. If you load this browser, that will insert a different data into your document. Now, if you make a request on the API endpoint user, you'll get the response back. And this will store the data in the database as you know this is not the post request but still you're going to insert the data in the database what i want on the different request we need to perform different actions for example for get request we get the data from the database for the post request we are going to insert this data in the database so let me show you how i can do that 